Marvel fans know that we're in the end game now, and we can't wait to see what happens during the next Avengers movie. During Infinity War, we said goodbye to many beloved characters, and we're eager to know who's going to come back and who's gone for good. We'll take a look at who's been confirmed to make an appearance during Endgame, and some of these callbacks may just surprise you. As we all know, the end of Avengers Infinity War had us saying goodbye to many of its enormous cast. While we lost many heroes during the decimation, there were some who passed away outside of that incident and their fates are much more up in the air. Undoing Thanos' wish to wipe out half of all life in the universe is one thing, but what about the death of Gamora, who was thrown off a cliff before Thanos even acquired all of the Infinity Stones, or Loki and Heimdall, who both perished on a spaceship along with many of their fellow Asgardians? Because because of this, who's gonna show up in Avengers Endgame is a tantalizing mystery and one us fans just can't stop thinking about. Who's going to be coming back from Infinity War or from any of the other movies taking place in the MCU? Well, the IMDB page for Avengers Endgame has been updated and there are some surprising entries to the cast list. Not only do some surprising faces pop up, but some familiar names are still missing, much to the dismay of many fans. In addition to its incredible visuals and the appearance of the Time Stone, Doctor Strange also contains a poignant moment which ranks among the most touching in the history of the MCU. The Ancient One, portrayed by actress Tilda Swinton, was responsible for teaching Doctor Strange about magic and was known for being a tough, fair, and surprisingly patient mentor. But later on in the movie, we learn that she managed to extend her life so long due to her connection to the insidious Dark Dimension. While the Ancient One felt the ends justified the means, others disagreed. During battle, the Ancient One was mortally wounded, but used her astral form to buy herself a little more time while she chatted with Doctor Strange. She revealed that, despite being able to see into multiple futures, she had never been able to see past the moment of her own demise. We rarely say this about characters in the MCU, you, but it definitely seems safe to say that the Ancient One left us for good at the end of Doctor Strange. This explains why fans were so surprised to see Tilda Swinton's name appear on the list of actors set to appear in Avengers Endgame. In addition, Mark Ruffalo, who plays the Hulk, mentioned during an interview that he enjoyed working with Tilda Swinton on a recent project. Since the Hulk wasn't in Doctor Strange and the Ancient One wasn't in Infinity War, many people had predicted this comment meant the Ancient One would be coming back for Endgame. But surely, the Ancient One can't come back from the dead, so is this further confirmation that time travel will be involved somehow? The Battle of New York was a momentous moment in the MCU, and we've seen some set photos which confirm that our heroes will be revisiting the site of this famous fight at some point during Endgame. Because we've seen pictures of an older looking Tony Stark, many believe this confirms that our heroes will actually be traveling back in time instead of just reminiscing about a previous battle. Not only was this battle a significant stake-raising, history-changing, world-altering one, but it represents a time when there were three Infinity Stones in close proximity to one another on Earth. The Space Stone, or the Tesseract, was in possession of Howard Stark, Tony's father, following the events of Captain America the First Avenger. After the Avengers, Thor takes it back to Asgard, but during the battle, it's located at Stark Towers. Loki himself is in possession of the second Infinity Stone, the Mind Stone, which he uses in his scepter. Thanos gave it to him and ordered him to retrieve the Space Stone, but obviously that didn't quite go according to plan. And although we didn't realize it at the time, there was also a third Infinity Stone which could be readily accessed during this battle. During Doctor Strange, we learned the Ancient One possessed the Time Stone, which is being kept inside the artifact known as the Eye of Agamotto. We also learned about the New York Sanctum, one of the three Sanctum Sanctorums in the world. The Sanctum itself contains many magical artifacts, but it also allows easy access to where the Time Stone was being held. If our heroes do end up going back to the Battle of New York and they're looking for Infinity Stones, it's entirely possible that they'd visit the New York Sanctum during this journey. And and at that moment in history, the Sanctum and the Time Stone were under the protection of the Ancient One, which would explain Tilda Swinton's appearance in Endgame. At the very least, three surviving members of the Avengers know where the New York Sanctum is. Doctor Strange brought Thor there for a brief chat about Loki during Thor Ragnarok, and Bruce Banner and Tony Stark visited during Infinity War. Going back to the Battle of New York could mean recovering half of the Infinity Stones in one fell swoop. Considering she had seen so much during her exceptionally long 
life, but is unable to see past her own death, it would be interesting to see if the Ancient One expected our heroes to show up or not. Taking the Sorcerer Supreme by surprise seems like a really terrible idea, so hopefully she got a mystical heads up to expect them. Although we're very excited at the prospect of seeing the Ancient One back in action in the MCU, she isn't the only character listed as making an appearance. In fact, although we saw her take her last breath during Doctor Strange, she's actually the least surprising person on the cast list who didn't appear during Infinity War. Much more surprising was the name Frank Grillo, who portrays the character Brock Rumlow, better known as Crossbones. This is another character we saw meet his end in the MCU, so it's hard to imagine how he could be showing up without the addition of time travel. Crossbones was one of the agents of Hydra operating within S.H.I.E.L.D., which we learned during Captain America The Winter Soldier. He later attempted to assassinate Captain America, but ended up with some disfiguring facial scars for all of his trouble. During Captain America Civil War, we learned Crossbones was the one who attempted to kill Captain America using an explosion, which Wanda Maximoff was forced to deflect using her powers. This caused the deaths of some innocent people, which then launched the Sokovia Accords and kicked off the Civil War portion of the film. While Crossbones isn't someone we might immediately think of when it comes to classic MCU villains, he did have a pretty important role in the history of the MCU. Sure, it's a particularly terrible part of its history, but it's history nonetheless. When we learned Frank Grillo would be reprising his role of Crossbones during Endgame, many comic book fans were excited about the prospect of the character being done justice on the big screen. So with that, we hate to disappoint, but we have to announce that Crossbones Crossbones isn't really coming back in a true sense. Grillo has confirmed that he's going to be making an appearance during Endgame, but assures fans it's simply part of a flashback. Getting a direct answer from anyone involved in Endgame is pretty shocking, but at least we know what's going on. He even added not to expect him in any other Marvel movies because he's getting too old for that sort of thing. As to what the movie could be flashing back to, it could be any number of important MCU moments. After all, Crossbones is responsible in no small part for kicking off the Sokovia Accords and the resulting fallout among the Avengers. He was also one of the Hydra operatives working within S.H.I.E.L.D., another major plot point with far-reaching ramifications for the MCU. It will no doubt be interesting to see which of Crossbone's various evil deeds is going to be worth flashing back to during Endgame. Now let's talk about the most unexpected addition to the Endgame cast so far, Harley Keener. To answer your next question, which we're sure is, who? Harley Keener is that precocious little boy with a sad backstory who helped out Tony Stark during Iron Man 3. He was played by actor Ty Simpkins and was the first kid in the MCU to have a major role in a movie. When Tony needed to do some repairs to his Iron Man armor, he ended up in Harley's garage. Everyone makes a big deal about Tony Stark's relationship with Peter Parker, but before before Spidey came along, there was Harley. He and Tony had a connection, according to Harley, and they both managed to help each other out of some difficult spots over the course of the movie, despite their differences in age and income. At the end of Iron Man 3, we saw that Tony had tricked out Harley's garage with some top-notch computer and robotics equipment, but that was all the way back in 2013, and most people never expected to see Harley come back, especially not in a massively significant movie like Endgame. With adult actors, it's easier to hide the passage of time, but consider Considering how young Harley was during Iron Man 3, we have to think we're going to see a present day Harley and not a flashback of him as a little kid years ago. We aren't saying that we disliked Harley's character, but many fans left the theater wondering what the point was of having Iron Man adopt a temporary, adorable little sidekick. Other than talking him down from his anxiety attack, Harley could have been omitted from the movie without changing it very much. Still, their relationship was sweet and perhaps helped to humanize Tony a little bit more. Many fans believe some of our favorite characters may not make it through Endgame, and Tony is a popular pick for someone who might find themselves dead for good. Robert Downey Jr. has been in the MCU since it began, and many wonder if it's simply for logistical reasons that the character won't be used anymore. Story-wise, there are now other brilliant minds with access to advanced technology in the MCU, so his character wouldn't leave as much of a void at this point if he were to be killed off. If Tony does end up passing away during Endgame, 
time. Seeing a more grown-up Harley at his funeral would definitely serve to make the moment more emotional. This touching cameo seems pretty likely, but some fans believe that Harley will have a much bigger part to play. If Tony Stark doesn't end up making it past the endgame, is it possible we'll get a new Iron Man? During Iron Man 3, we saw a young Harley who was already adept at creating interesting gadgets, and since then, he's had tons of advanced technology at his disposal. We're guessing he hasn't been spending the time since Iron Man 3 and is just using those computers Tony gave him to play Fortnite instead. There's even a comic book precedent for a younger version of Iron Man called Iron Lad. In the comics, a teenager named Nathaniel Richards has trouble getting in touch with Tony, so he decides to build his own Iron Man suit. Sure, we know that Harley is isn't the same as Nathaniel, but Marvel Studios isn't exactly known for sticking strictly to the comic books. We know it may not exactly count as surprising, but we think you should know that all of the heroes who perished during the decimation are slated to come back during Endgame. Of course, this doesn't mean they'll all necessarily survive, but it does mean that we'll get to see them on the big screen for a little bit longer. While who's going to show up during Endgame is a big deal, so is who isn't going to be making an appearance, at least not that we know of at this point in time. Lots of characters perished during Infinity War, whether as a result of the decimation itself or due to the battles fought to obtain or protect the Infinity Stones. Fans have been wondering if those characters who died outside of the Decimation will be able to find their way back to the MCU, just like those who died from Thanos' snap are supposed to. While most people aren't exactly staying up at night wondering if the members of the Black Order are going to be okay, there are three characters everyone seems to be concerned about. Heimdall, Loki, and Gamora. It just so happens that none of the actors who portray them are confirmed to be appearing in Endgame. Of course, this could just be Marvel Studios messing with us and waiting to confirm all these characters until closer to the release date. After all, withholding information to build anticipation is kind of their thing, but they're still the very very real possibility that we've seen some of these great characters for the very last time in the MCU. Now that we've given you all the confirmed information that we have, what do you think is going to happen during Endgame? What other characters do you expect to see show up? Let us know what you think in the comments section below, and don't forget to subscribe to CBR for more MCU content. Thanks for watching.